So it's part three in the retro sci-fi mega tutorial. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at creating smoke and adding color to that smoke in After Effects. Let's cut to the video and see where we're at and where we're going. If you've been following along, that's great. But if you are watching this and you haven't watched part one and two, that's okay. Because the way I've designed these is that you'll be able to use these to follow any technique that you need from the series without having to follow along any of the others. With that said, my name is Shul Gonsolves and I break down and teach animation and special effects techniques to help you become a better animator. So hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you get reminded when there are new video tutorials coming through. Let's jump straight into After Effects and take a look at where we're going with this. So there's a few things that, that are happening here and uh, let's actually open the video. The smoke has multicolors around it, but it's pretty um, structured and it does rotate around the logo. So let's just dive into where we were before and so that we're on a level playing field I'm going to go forward in time so that everything's static. I'm also going to just solo a few layers so that we're working on something more simplified and then I've just gone ahead and shied the other layers so that we don't see them. So all we have here is a top logo, a background kind of plaque, and then I'm keeping this glow on because it does affect the background. Few steps we need to take is I'm using Particular to create the smoke. So if you don't have that, there will be a link in the description. Click on that. Uh, you can use the trial, see if you enjoy it. If you do, think about purchasing it through the link in the description. It does help the channel. But let's just add it to a scene and take a look at how we can create the smoke. Let's create a new solid, call this particular. It's the same size as my comp and I'm going to click OK. Then under effects and presets, I'm going to type in particular and double click that to add it to our scene. If I just make sure that's soloed by itself, we get this default kind of particle emitter. And what I want to do is I actually want to use this background plaque as our emitter um, shape. This way I can update it and I can put any kind of shape in there and be able to emit particles very quickly without having to customize the emitter itself. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to press U to delete any keyframes on it. I'm also going to unparent it so that it's just static and we're working on something that isn't going to be following the animations which you created in the previous tutorials. Also, I'm going to take off the glow and we should be good. Um, let's also make it a 3D layer. Uh, the reason we're doing this is because Particular needs a 3D layer to be able to emit particles from. First thing you want to do is take a look down here. You're going to drop down your emitter. This is a good place to start when building up your particle systems. Um, you have to ask your question, what am I going to be shooting out from? Is it a point? We know it's going to be our layer, so we're going to click on that. And we are going to see this grayed out area turn on. And we are able to click the drop down, go to layer and select that duplicate of the logo. Let's just rename that so it says emitter. Now we can see our particles are actually coming out as the color of our layers. So I'm going to take that off and press none. This way we're left with some white particles. Also want the particles to come off the top of this base object. Um, and right now our emitter size has a Z depth. So this means that it imagines this object has some three dimensional space to it. I'm going to change that down to zero. And if we take our velocity off, 
you'll see that our particles are now perfectly on top of that background. You can drag this up. Let's just keep this to about 2000 for now and we'll take it up at the end uh, to about 2700. I'm also going to drop this down to half for recording purposes. And then we need to play with a few things. Now that we can see where we started at with the velocity, I want to add some movement to this so that it's coming towards us or going away from us. Um, and the direction is set to uniform, but you just want to drop down to the next one down called directional. And now when we add our velocity, you see we can actually control it. This allows us to be able to rotate the direction of these particles and where they're going but we just want it coming straight towards us for now and I want to change the direction spread to just about 8. The trick with creating smoke is the particle itself so let's just drop down the next option there and we're going to change our sphere to something called a cloudlet. Now you want to make this cloudlet really big so let's go up to about 105 and you want some randomness so they're not all the same. So let's say 50. And then I don't want them living too long. So let's say 1.2 for the life. And the last thing that's going to make this look right is changing the opacity. And you want to go really low here. So if I'd say 2%, this is already looking pretty good. There's some theory behind smoke. When you see smoke created, it starts really small and grows larger at the same time it starts fading out as it gets larger so we just need to do those two settings and that is under size over life you can go to the presets select that this is opposite to what we want we want it to grow bigger as it lives longer and then we want opacity over life to actually die and fade out over life. So now that we've got this, let's just add some more particles to this. I said 2700 before. Size is there. Let's say some life random, 50%. And we start getting this more organic kind of looking smoke on the outside. Now there's a few ways that we can actually add color to our smoke. And I've just create this composition right here to show you that. In this example, our smoke is exactly like we have it in the other, except I'm just blowing it to the side so you can visually see what's happening here. So the first option is that we can come down to the particle drop down and go to set color. And we can change this color to anything that we like. And the particles will be that exact color. Or we can change the start to over life. And the default, if I drop down this color over life, the color ramp is actually just a rainbow kind of color. And you can change this to anything you like. You can add some extras in here and customize it to your project's taste. There is also another option right here, which you can change to random from gradient. And if we just change this preset back to that kind of rainbow of colors, you'll see that each particle is a different color and it's mixing so this is all good and well but if you want some more control over your particles I'm going to show you how to do that as well if you're finding this video helpful please click the like button uh, it does help the channel quite a bit let's just go down to the emitter I'm going to hide my particles for now and I'm actually going to add my colors to the emitter itself so I'm going to say color gradient and I'm going to use this four color gradient on it. And I've got four different colors which I specifically used for the video that you saw. So if you want to copy those, I'm just going to add them right now. It is FF87DF. Press OK. Next one down is FFDA. 1,9 and that's for the yellow. Then we've got 1,4 CCCC, that's for the light blue. And then 
FF00BB for the pink. Now if we go back to our particular, you'll remember we changed the layer RGB usage to none. And if we change that back to use the particle color from the emitter, we get our pink particles again, which is the default state of that emitter. What if we wanted to use the effects on that emitter? And this is this option right over here, right next to our layer, which we can say use the source, but look at the effects on the source as well and use those colors. As I click that, we'll see our particle colors start coming out. Now, something I want to do is just edit this four color gradient where the colors are. And I'm just gonna pull these in so that we can get so some more saturated colors from our emitter. You can see what's happening here. Another thing I wanna do is just add a vibrance to my particular layer and just really crank this vibrance up and the saturation. And this is sort of where I was with the video. Then I'm gonna drop that down to below the logo background. Let's unsolo everything and we have our particles emitting. The final thing I have in my video is that I'm rotating this around constantly and that is just by setting the emitter to have a rotation on it. So let's just um, solo this for a second and what you wanna do is you are going to rotate this on the Z axis. So I'm just going to keyframe that, move it to zero and set this to about one and drag this on and we should you'll have something like this when we hide that again our particle system will actually rotate with that emitter as well and if you're following along with the series the final thing that you need to do is just go to your land position and move your particular layer to that so that it's not emitting before that. We can take a look at this just one more time. Okay, so in the last video which is coming up, we're going to be taking a look at how to create a very simple but really affected glitch effect which you can reuse amongst all your projects. Save it as a little file and import it and just use it everywhere around. Thank you very much and until next time.